As the accelerating vehicle passes through, we all look up to the sky, the no matter where you are in the world. There's a sky above you. Another step toward man. And to be touching that is a really cool experience that most people have never had. 40 students from about 35 different colleges get together to launch a rocket to outer space. But we really have no like, faculty advisors or nothing of that sort. When you have all these different parts of this rocket, it's made by different people, and they all come together at once, nothing really fits together. That's bad. You know, the rocket's going up and it does this. This one is 805 grams. This one is 879 grams. How do you, how do you think this might have happened to you? All right, let's plug that back in. It has been really tough. Uh, we have a deadline by 4 p.m. One thing I'm worried about is fasteners, hardware, and parts. We're looking at a story live here. This is the, this is the lowest point. I took a risk, and it's a decision I made. I mean, even if it doesn't work, which it probably will not, I don't think I, re I regret it. Five, four, three, two, one. This is Operation Space. Operation Space is a group of like 40 students from about 35 different colleges who want to get together and do something interesting. What we thought was interesting was to launch a rocket to outer space. So my name is Joshua Farazad. I founded Operation Space and serve as its project lead. I've always been kind of obsessed with like space. After freshman year, I felt really unstimulated from my classes. And I was just looking for something more, and I wanted something crazy. I, I kind of said to myself, I'm gonna launch a rocket to outer space. I'm gonna give this my best shot. Perfect launch, MR1. And so I started typing up an email, and I started sending emails to every rocket club in the United States. And I got a lot of responses of people saying like, who the hell are you? I really had no experience, but I knew in my heart that like I was gonna give this my best shot and I, I was really confident. Like it quickly spiraled in those next few weeks. People started saying, I'm gonna join. So at the end of May, we had a team operation space, but we really have no like institutional backing. Right? We don't have any faculty advisors or nothing of that sort. It's like a completely decentralized operation taking place in a bunch of different universities and dorm rooms, et cetera. Have you ever done that on fiberglass? Yeah, Look up some YouTube videos, some like vlogs and stuff. Basically, our resource has been the internet. So this this is a lot better than coming in blue. I'm Saad Mirza. I'm technical lead of Operation Space. Different parts of this rocket were designed in different places. So basically, like the avionics system was designed by students at Purdue University. Our first aid was designed by students at Vanderbilt University. All these things were designed remotely over Slack. And then, you know, when you have all these different parts from different places made by different people, nothing really fits together. Three, two, one. What? No. <laughs> Let's start. At this given moment, like, the rocket isn't complete. We're about a month away. Uh, we don't have our fins. We don't have our inner stage. Our electronics are, like, barely done. I think a very realistic thing with, is like maybe we have a 50-50 shot. Basically, we're launching in New Mexico because we need a lot of land. So, I mean, if this rocket's going, say, 70 miles up, that means it could go in any direction more than that. So the only place you can really launch inland is New Mexico because there's like nothing there. Spaceport America is the first private commercial spaceport that's licensed by the FAA, or the Federal Aviation Administration, to put things into space. So it's like an airport, but it's a spaceport. So this is the plan. We're building two 17-foot rockets out of aluminum and steel. It's based off of 1960s sounding rocket designs from NASA. We're putting one rocket on top of another in what's called a two-stage rocket. When we press that button, all of a sudden, the rocket will scream off the rail, hopefully on its way to space. We're trying to basically go beyond 100 kilometers across the Kármán line, which is uh, 100 kilometers above, above sea level. And a lot of people say, above 100 kilometers, Earth's atmosphere ends and outer space begins. So it'll go above the Kármán line, 
and then it won't stay in orbit, but rather it'll fall back to Earth. So like, welcome to my crib, guys. Let's cut that. <laughs> let's not do that. All right, all right, but let's actually show it. Over here is actually some pretty essential stuff. Believe it or not, those porta parties were kind of hard to get. And there's uh, nine students, three cadets from West Point, rocking about 13 people, including myself and Saad. This is where we're gonna do our rocket assembly. So the motors, our ignition systems, everything is happening in here. Oh yeah, can I get the 5366, dude? Yeah, no, can one person just demo me and then like... So we got all these parts, we've never really seen them before, fit them together on the rocket. So everything doesn't really fit quite right. Some of them are like 100 grams heavier than others and they're supposed to all be exactly the same. So if like one side of the rocket's heavier than the other, the thing will corkscrew and that's no good. So we have to, we have one day to get all these parts fixed and that's how we're heading over to the machine shop now. <laughs> This is the first time that I've actually done any sort of rocket. This part connects to the motor and then the body tube slides over it. So this is the connecting link right here. And we got it from California. It's completely messed up. You can see how slot, so that's bad. If the, ro if, you know, if the rocket's going up and it does this, that's not good. So we're gonna have him try to save the other one by doing some sketchy uh, adapter ring and maybe gluing it on or something. You know, sketchy and uh, going to space don't usually go together. <laughs> so can we talk about the fins now? This one's, you can look at the mass and we can show you. How many do you have here? Six. This one is 805 grams. This one is 879 grams. And they're the same fin. So when you put them on the rocket, the whole thing is unbalanced. It flies like in a corkscrew. How do you, how do you think this might have happened, Neil? Okay, say so, uh, metal is kind of a weird critter. It looks like somebody wrapped it with their end mill. I mean, we can do all the math and stuff we want, but we put the real guides in, we hang the rocket from it, and we just mess with it. I think we need to, we, we need to cut our margins. Hey, Sasha, who's checking your math on all this? Nobody. We are. One of my guys, Miles, just came in that car over there. He uh, went through the consequences and just got the parts back from Neil. He's been machining all day, basically. Oh, wow, the propellant is loaded. Okay. Let's see if I can get this out. <laughs> okay. Maybe we should hit the gym more. <laughs> um, so basically what he did was, I don't know if you can see in the camera, it's almost indistinguishable, but he added a tiny ring and then he shrink-fitted it on top. So now this fits on top here. Oh, wait, that was perfect. And then we had the fin. So we asked him to remove material just to lighten it and that make it go higher too. And he realized this is not possible. So instead we have to add material. I don't really know what to say, but that's all we can do at this point. Arguably, if like, <laughs> we're looking at a storyline here, this is, the, this is the lowest point in the storyline. I mean, uh, I'm, really, I'm just really concerned about those sustainer fins, honestly. You put a year in, like, I just want to see this thing be as good as possible. And, like, some of the machining work was just, like, not good. It was done by some incompetent individuals. I still think the most important thing is that, you know, we launch and it's safe. And af everything after that is still a bonus. This project took up a lot of my time. Unfortunately, you know, I had to uh, withdraw from Princeton University uh, the day before the deadline. So basically, I lost a whole semester worth of tuition. No, I don't think I, re I regret it so far. I mean, even if it doesn't work, I still think I took a risk and I generally don't want to do the same thing that everybody else and all my peers are doing. I'd rather do something different. It's pretty heavy. It's about, what, 126 pounds, 137 pounds. This is the first stage. It's still still called the booster. So it's 4.44 a.m. right now. Uh, we're targeting launch time around 6 a.m. still. Uh, a lot of this is based on how the winds are looking, and they're looking fantastic right now. I have no idea if this thing's gonna make space. So I think it's something like 10 or 12,000 feet for every pound. It's four pounds heavier than we thought. And we have no idea how that happened. I guess we don't really know what we're doing, but uh, we just lost a few thousand feet. Uh, but I think what really matters is that we beat all odds to get the thing together, get the team down here, 
and get out on the rail. Beautiful. A year ago today, this project like really started, and like we're actually here, like out of spaceport in New Mexico. Um, there's a rocket on a rail right now. It's really humbling. And no matter where you are in the world, like there's a sky above you. And to be touching that is a really cool experience that most people have never felt, never had, and never been a part of. The point of all this is to prove that a really small team of college students without any official university backing can sort of just figure stuff out off the internet, meet off the internet, and pull off something really difficult. And if we can do that, then who's to say what you can't do? It's by meeting some people off the internet. All right, we good? Yeah, we're good again. When I thought about this project originally, how hard could it be? You know, oh, uh, I was extremely naive. I'd say there's a couple things that, you know, we would have done differently. If we basically had designed it to just spin a little bit faster, if those fins were angled a little bit more, it would have made it. But overall, this was an absolutely amazing experience. Honestly, it was life-changing. I'm so glad I met Josh and all the other really talented people on the team. And I, I would gladly do it again.